Hey there comic fam, welcome to Climbing Comics, I'm Alan and today we'll be talking about my comic journey. So today we'll be talking about how I started getting into comics, where I am today and where we were throughout this whole story. So like many folks that I've been talking to recently, I'm one of those 90 kids that grew up with X-Men and Spider-Man and Batman the Animated Series. So those were really my first introduction to actually any any sort of comic book characters. So during this time, I really didn't get into comics at all. So I think one of the first things that I started collecting were cards. So they were Marvel cards from I think 91, 92. There, there was those impel cards, right, where each of the characters essentially had the picture up front, and then on the back, it'd show, like, different categories of stats, right, like agility, strength, um, intelligence, and kind of ratings from 1 to 10 on each, and there'd be, like, this kind of bar that kind of extends to the end or midpoint, and yeah, and they would kind of go over their origin story and essentially what their powers were. So this was my first introduction to comic book characters. So soon after that, I got into comic books. My parents let me, brought me to the comic book shop near my home, and I got my first couple comic books. I remember, I think the first couple were probably some DCs, some Batman, Supermans, Green Lanterns, some um, probably Spider-Man as well, and of course X-Men because I was a a huge X-Men fan. The thing was, I wasn't able to go to the comic book store every single week. So essentially what happened was I was reading, for example, Detective Comics issue number 550. And then the next issue I read was like 583. So there was like these huge spans and these huge gaps in storylines, which I didn't really get into the story at all, really. So during this time, I have a lot of really random books from really random characters and I think one of the things that pulled me to buy those books were essentially the covers so a lot of the early comic book covers were really cool that I got and um, during this time everything was kind of feeding into it right I was learning more from the stories from Batman the Animated Series, the Amazing Spider-Man series Um, I could hear the Peter Parker voice in my head that's like the Peter Parker voice in my head and and X-Men and all of the others. And to go along with this, I think during this time in, in, in school, one of the big things in the 90s were pogs, right? So I remember those high C pogs that I collected as a kid. And it was it was really great because, you know, like they, they would come in like a cardboard slab that had three circles in it. And then you kind of punch out each of those circles and each of those circles was one of the characters, right? So there'd be Savage Land. And I was like, who's this character? So during this time, I wasn't able to really look up all of these characters, but in the back, they kind of gave short descriptions between um, like who these characters were and like kind of where they fit in the storyline. So with pogs and with uh, collecting cards and kind of intermittently collecting comics, I think that was my first um, experience with, with comic book collecting. What really drove that was I have uh, two really close cousins, uh, very close in age, like a year or two older and a year or two younger. And what we would hang out over the weekends and each of us would, you know, our parents would intermittently go to comic book shops and we would kind of exchange. It's funny during Christmas, like we, we didn't have money ourselves as kids. So what we would do is we would gift each other our comic books. So we had more to read and more to, more to, um, more to get background on. So during this time, we were really creative kids. So what we would do is we would draw characters and then on the back of that piece of paper, we would take, we were inspired by the cards, right? We would write origin stories and then write their powers and then their levels of powers and whatnot. I remember during this time, what was big um, at those um, scholastic book fairs was zoo books right? Those zoo books where they kind of go over all of all the different animals and like where they're from and like not what their powers are, but like, you know, things they eat and whatnot. But I remember one of like, I drew my first character. It was, um, it was a koala and he was like wearing an ascot. Um, and for some reason, one, like 
since he was my very first character, I was like, okay, let me make him like Professor X. So I gave him powers, mental abilities, and he was able to, like, you know, like mind control other people and do certain things. And, like, after a couple of weeks of me and my cousins just building out characters and characters and characters, we had like a folder full of different characters we wrote about. And what was fun about it was that we would. Choose each character and then kind of battle my character versus my cousin's character. So, based off of their powers, they would like kind of do different abilities and like we would just make stuff up. But the funny thing was, is that each of our characters in the end had some sort of invincibility shield. So, there was never a winner whenever we played because whenever there was going to be some sort of、uh, final move. That one of our characters would make, the other would just put up、uh, their invincible shield. So it was pretty funny how、um, we all had that one same power, but, but、um, that was pretty cool. I, I think being a, a kid and having that imagination and having that kind of be driven and kind of、uh, having comic books be a catalyst of that、uh, imagination was one of the, like, The biggest things that kind of drove me into comics and drove me into liking these characters, trying to learn about their backstories and whatnot. Soon enough, you know,、um, middle school, high school comes along and, you know, th- that tapers down a little bit, like interests change. So I kind of stopped、uh, with comic book collecting as well as, you know, just、um, comics and, and characters like that in general. So it, there was a huge lull in that time. Uh, between school and like where I restarted collecting comic books. So there was a good span of, I'd say maybe、um, 10 to 15 years where like I would just only intermittently pick something up here or there. But in 2019, so this is Free Comic Book Day 2019, if I remember correctly. This was soon after the release of Into the Spider Verse. So, I watched that and I watched it with my nieces, and my nieces loved it, right? Maybe, maybe to the point of watching it way too many times. But so, one of them was really, really into Spider Gwen. So, I was like, okay, let me check out、um, the LCS that was two miles away. There's a bunch of people there. And like, I was kind of overwhelmed, right? This is the first time I'm coming back into comics, and there's a lot of people, new people, like veterans, and everyone there. But they had like age ranges everywhere, but they had free comic books out. So I picked up a couple of free comic books. And at that same time, I picked up Spider Gwen and also Miles Morales and also War of the Realms and also Justice League Dark. So I was there and I was like, okay, let me read some of these things. So a, a couple of these big storylines I kind of latched onto, right? War of the Realms, I, I started on, and、um, Justice League Dark, I still continue. I know、um, War of the Realms was just that summer crossover, but Justice League Dark is kind of one of the things that really got me back into comics. Because at that same time, I was watching、um, uh, Young Justice, I believe, Young Justice, and there are some characters in there,、um, like Zatanna and、um, Zatara. And like all like these characters that kind of appeared in Justice League Dark. And I was like, all right, let me ca-、uh, grab onto this. So that was really cool. And then so af- after reading some of that, soon after, like I, I went to, I kept going back to LCS, talked to my comic shop owner, and I was asking him, oh, I really am into X Men. Like, what do, you, what do you guys recommend? And he's like, oh, just、um, hold up and wait till the end of the year because they're revamping all of X Men. So, I am so happy that I did. So, at the end of 2019 was when they released the House of X and、uh, Powers of Ten、like, mini series, which kicked off and revamped the whole Dawn of X series that is st- currently ongoing. Man, that is my favorite series of 2019 2020 thus far. I was one of those guys that I went into the comic book shop. After I left the comic book shop, I sat in my car and I read, that, I read that issue. It was just like really good. Because to me, from the little pieces that I, I took from when I was growing up as a kid, I would only really have like these little strings of different storylines. The, the House and Powers took a couple of things that I knew and I, I latched onto and they weaved them all together, right? Just saying that 
all of this story that happened is true. All the storylines that I was reading was part of this storyline, even though I didn't read a lot of the, at that point,、um, like pre Chris Claremont or even、um, kind of post Chris Claremont type of storyline. There's a lot of things, a lot of like side stories that, that, that made sense to me. And I was like, okay, I could latch on to this. So it was one of the things where it, that resurgence of, of the X Men, the Dawn of X series, I was. I was like really captivated by that storyline. And one of my favorite writers and artists combo like came together, right? So,、uh, Jonathan Hickman and Pepe l a r a z is one of my favorite artists of 2020 right now. So, with them coming together, and, and he was at that point, at that point,、um, I believe Pepe l a r a z was considered like one of the young guns, right? One of the new and up and coming artists. But Some of his work is just like really is it matched really well with how the story was being told. So, with all of these series going on, I just dove right in, right? So, at this time, I was, you know, looking at different comic books, watching different YouTubers. At this time, I was checking out Reggie Collects, Comic Tom,、um, you know, Comics Explained. Uh, comics with Bueller. So there's a ton of, a ton of fee- people that I, that I、um, latched onto and just kind of used as all right, these are my guiding posts to how I should start collecting and recollecting. So I kind of went over the deep end, right? I just went from you know, buying just one to subscribing on my pull list to many comics and then researching and、um, you know, getting Marvel Unlimited and DC Universe.、Um, And reading a bunch of the original, original like comics, which at that point I, I, I didn't have or like I, I can't afford, right? Like Action Comics number one or Amazing Spider Man number one,、um, Amazing Fantasy. So, all of these series, like I was able to read from the beginning and then I started to build up that knowledge, right? So, up until this point, there's a lot of things. Um, I'm doing with my buddy Johnny, who's also super into comic books. So, Like, our kind of comic book journeys have kind of both like kind of waxed and waned a little bit. Well, mine more so waxed and waned while he was pretty consistent, but I only really got back into comic books with him and I started to talk to him about it. And we would have lunchtime conversations about comics, and now we even have our own podcast together. So,、um, I'll definitely. Add that link to the description below, but definitely listen to some of our, our content in there. So, there's a lot of things that I want to talk about in this, in this kind of comic journey of my own. There's, there's a lot of things and a lot of lessons learned which I've gone through myself from you know, my own experiences as well as listening to others' experiences. And cataloging this whole thing is, is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm starting this series, right? So, For me, this is more so of a, of, of a personal blog to, to see where I am, put stakes in the ground of my comic book journey, right? Because I went from trying to collect everything to now being a little bit more focused and having goals for 2020. And that's one of the things I want to talk about here is some of my goals and where I am today and, and reaching those goals, as well as. Where my, my knowledge goal is, or my collection goal is, or any type of goal in terms of、um, its association with the comics. So, in, in this whole series, I, f- I feel like I've gone like, everywhere, right?、Um, trying to clean my own books,、uh, trying to, to like, send my own stuff to CGC, working with, with people on Instagram and, and eBay, and reading a bunch of first appearances. and... A lot of things kind of are kind of coming together right now. So, as a kid, I knew I had like these little bits and pieces of storyline. And what I'm trying to do is fill that storyline with information for myself. And hopefully, you guys can join me on my comic journey because I'll be essentially talking about the books that I'm reading and my own experiences with, with、um, the community around me. And hopefully, the, the goal of this is to. Have that community、um, be stronger and kind of talk to each other. And hopefully, I could learn from you guys. This is more of an outreach from me to you to, to figure out, like, hey, what do you guys think about、um, X, Y, or Z? And then, so I'll be able to incorporate that into my comic journey as well. It's, there's so many facets, it's, it's kind of crazy. And I can't put them all in just like one episode. 
but um, I'll definitely be breaking it up and kind of talking about the things that I'm currently doing. And this is going to be a cool and fun journey. So hopefully you guys all get to join me on it. So essentially from my comic journey to yours, I'm taking this from <laughs> from my podcast. Um, I got to figure out an ending. I can't use peace because I think that's what uh, Rob uses in uh, Comics Explained. But I'll figure out a good ending. So I'll talk to you all later, comic fam. Bye.